Oh, so he's running with it? There he is. Ooh. I don't think that's a crappie. I do not think that's a crappie at all. If that's a crappie, that is a big, big crappie. That is not a crappie. Today we're talking about bobbers, slip bobbers specifically. This is actually a request that I saw in the comment section come up quite a bit. And that is the combination of a crappie rig that I like to use in the fall, which is the double jig crappie rig setup. Super effective way to fish crappie in deeper water. In the fall time, that's what these fish are doing. They're pushing out to those uh, deeper edges of that hard soft bottom transition on our natural lakes. Today I'm on a natural lake. On the river systems, they can get a little bit shallower, but tend to follow along with the same rules. If you can find that hard to soft bottom transition from sand, gravel, uh, rock, that transition into, into mud, muck, or silt, you're gonna find crappie there in the fall. Um, I'm actually set up on a pretty big mid-lake point that comes out, uh, but it's in about 22, 23 feet of water, and it does taper off on the edges into that mud, muck, and silt. On top, it's like rock, and there are some, some brush piles on top. Looks like some crappie are holding the brush piles, but a lot of them are just kind of spread out chasing bait fish. The setup I wanted to combine and that was requested in the comment section was the slip bobber setup with the double jig rig. So we're going to try it out. Not something I probably would typically use, but for those of us that absolutely love using a slip bobber and just watching that slip float go down, if you want to try it out, we're going to, I'm going to tell you how to tie it on right now. And you can try it out. Hopefully catch fish with it. Hopefully we catch fish with it today. When you're using a double jig setup, you're gonna probably have a heavier weights. I mean, even if you're using 16th ounce weights, now you got a full on eighth ounce. So you gotta select a bobber size that's gonna hold up both jigs. These guys right here, these pink jigs, these uh, with a sickle hook. I actually ran out of eighth ounce ACC jigs, so I gotta get more. I either have hair, hair jigs that have tied up or I got these smaller 32nd ounce. I don't even have 16th ounce hair jigs, so we're gonna use I think these, I got these from uh, Pico Lure sent me these, just these sickle hook jigs. And these are 16th ounce. So we're gonna have an eighth ounce total weight. I think the one inch might hold up both of these jigs, just in case. And this is why I love rod and bobs with the, the three in ones. If you noticed right here, I got the two notches. This, this notch down here, that's for a fixed bobber position. This top notch, it goes all the way up to the bottom of the stem here. That's for a slip bobber position, because when the spring closes, notice it doesn't close all the way, so your line can slide freely. So even if I pick the wrong bobber, I can uh, quick switch up to correctly adjust for these weights. Um, somebody asked about, in the last bobber video, actually a number of videos ago now, the purpose for disconnecting the bobber. If you're using a live minnow setup, like a, an Aberdeen hook with a split shot, if you guess the weight wrong, it's easy to switch. And I think one of the points that I made was it's easy to just remove it if you wanted to cast. Typically, if you're removing it to want to cast, you're using a jig setup, maybe not a double jig setup, but a single jig, and you just got a jig in plastic. You just want to remove this and you want to go ahead and cast, maybe put a, a curly tail or some sort of plastic that is more of a casting approach, gives a little bit more tail action versus something like this, which is, you know, it's a pretty good vertical jigging approach. Your creature baits, get that vertical jigging set up. Or even, this is by far my favorite bait presentation this fall is these bigger body minnows with a super sensitive tail. Um, typically I like vertical jigging these or having these suspended underneath a bobber or something rather than casting them. But if you get into here, something like this, something with a lot of tail action, this is a Pete Stackle Thor's hammer right here. A lot of tail action. These are something I would cast out. So it, that was kind of the main point of why it's really valuable to be able to disconnect the slip bobber. If you're using a jig in plastic and you want to cast out, that's valuable. If you're using a, a split shot and a minnow and a, with an Aberdeen hook, you know, maybe it's not that valuable and you can run the line right through the, the middle of the grommet there. If you have never seen a slip bobber setup that I use, eight foot ACC crappie stick is the rod of choice. These crappie sticks have the larger eyelets. I've had people comment about using the six and a half foot rods for slip bobber fishing. Not good rods for slip bobber fishing. Those are casting rods. They got the micro eyelets. Um, they're meant to do a lot of casting. These have the larger eyelets, so that slip stop isn't gonna get as caught as often. 
Um, it still happens from time to time, but for the most part, it shouldn't be a problem. The double jig setup is super simple. I'm gonna put the pink jig on the top one. You're just gonna slide it down the line for now. And then this jig on the bottom, and it's just two loop knots. That's all we're tying, two simple loop knots. You're gonna just fold the line over. You're gonna pinch the tag end and the main line with your left hand. Pinch it again with your right. Leave it dangle like that, and you're gonna flip it over the pinched line here one time. And you got a little bit of a loop from your right hand, index finger, and thumb. You're gonna put that jig right through that loop. Just like that. Pull it tight, and then you go ahead and clip off that tag end with the scissors that I know I have somewhere. Now for that second jig, we're gonna put it, mm, we're gonna put about a foot above that top jig. So right about, we're gonna put about right about there, foot above that top jig. And again, it's just a simple loop knot. Pinch that line together like that, both hands. And you're gonna flip it over that pinch line one time, create that loop with your right hand. You do this the other way if you're a lefty. And then put that jig right through that loop. And over the eyelet completely, and there we go. Pull that tight. And we got our double jig set up right there. Now, notice I didn't put a rubber bobber stop or anything on the line, because I want to show you how to tie this with just a simple uni knot. I did a video on this last time showing a little bit different out of the knot. I'm going to show you how to use it or tie it up with a uni knot. All right, to tie this up, I got about, uh, about seven, eight inches of braid here. And for the uni knot, all you're gonna do is pinch one end of the line together with your, always using mono when I use a slip bobber setup. And then you're just gonna make a loop like this and pinch both ends where they loop back together against that mono. Then you can take one tag end and you're gonna wrap it through that loop and around the mono probably four, five, six times, whatever you feel comfortable with. And for this, I'm actually using 35 pound braid. Um, it's actually, I just clipped this off one of my bass fishing setups. That's what I was using. You can use smaller braid if you don't need to use. This is a, probably a little bit big, but it probably shows up better on camera at least, hopefully. So there, I wrapped it about five times. And all you're gonna do is slowly pull it tight, wet it a little bit, and there you go. You got your stopper knot. So just in case if you ever forget to put on a slip stop knot or a rubber bobber stop, you can always tie your own, which is a simple uni knot. It doesn't take very long. I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna leave about three quarters. You wanna leave enough to, to grab, to tighten it up, because these knots, no matter what you do, they're gonna slip at some point. Once you start catching a bunch of fish, they tend to get caught in that top rod eyelet. So leave enough so that you can Pull it tight if you need to. But there we go. The key is with plastics, you always gotta move the bobber, especially if it's super calm like this. So you always gotta be popping the bobber, let it drop back down. If it, if it hits right away, then you gotta set the hook. These jig strikes are gonna be big. There's a musky just surfaced right there. That was a big musky too. Holy smokes. Just give it a little pop. And it's gonna sit back down because of that weight, but if it moves anywhere left, right, oh, Something tapped it. If something just taps it, go ahead and set the hook. Especially on a double jig setup. It's Oh, there he is, yep, popped it. That bobber just went pop. And you set it immediately. This isn't like a, a minnow strike. He absolutely inhaled that. This isn't like a minnow strike where you kind of let them sit there and eat it. As soon as they pop that jig, you absolutely inhaled that. I need the pliers. As soon as they pop that jig, you gotta set the hook. Doesn't matter if it's a double jig setup or single jig. A little guy, itty bitty guy, we'll get him back. So you catch another bigger one. And the other thing is if your line ever gets tangled, you can simply pop the bobber off and untangle the line and then reset the bobber. Now, after a few fish catches, make sure you check that slip stop because Typically, as you're reeling in that fish, there's a lot of pressure on that line. 
on that top eyelet of the rod. And that'll, once you're, when you're reeling in a bunch of fish, eventually it's gonna slip to a depth that you don't want it to. If it goes sideways, that means you got a fish. Oh, I missed him. I don't know if you guys saw that, the bobber went completely sideways. That would be what's called a negative bite. It doesn't necessarily mean the crappie don't want it. It usually means they grabbed it and they're so aggressive they ran up the water column with it. So the bobber will actually tip sideways. You gotta watch your line and you gotta watch the bobber because if the line stops moving, there's one. And that bo or that bobber kinda goes down, it means you got that fish. It means you got that fish. They're liking that firefly approach. Typically in the fall, these crappie, if they're lower in the water column, they're going to throw him on the pump board. They're going to feed on insect larva more so than they are bait fish. He's a nine and three quarter. Be a solid eater, but I don't, I don't have time to flip him up tonight. But typically, if they're lower in the water column in the fall, they're going to feed on insect larva. So creature baits will probably do a little bit better. If they're high up in the water column, they're suspended. They're feeding on bait fish, so. Something, something like this fry pattern will do a lot better. Oh my goodness, he, he took it right down. I was messing with the cameras. These carpi are aggressive today. Holy smokes, another one on that bottom jig. This is a, this might be a 10 incher. For this lake, that's actually pretty good, pretty decent. Let's see what this guy is. He is just, oops, just shy of a 10. You'd be some decent eating fish up here. Nice fillets. Here's kind of what some screenshots of what you're looking at for that hard to soft bottom transition in the fall. I know I've probably been saying it a bunch in a lot of these videos, but it's true. It's kind of where you're finding them and they might be a little bit shallower. You know, if we got cover like we got today where we got some, some brush piles or cribs that are right on the edge of this, this hard to soft bottom transition, they're going to stack up on that. If, uh, you got rock piles even, just something. Even if on the river system, I've been fishing the river, there's some docks in deeper water. And uh, you know, that's kind of where they're stacking up. If you can find that hard soft bottom transition with side imaging and kind of scan back and forth, uh, both shallower and a little bit deeper, you'll eventually run into the school. Let's pitch this out and if it gets tangled again, we might have to just re-spool the entire thing right now, which I don't want to do. If I had more time today, I would automatically, but oh my goodness, I think it just popped. Yeah. You got to get used to the weight of that bobber and just how it sits. Man, they are absolutely hammering these that bottom jig. Look how, bad, how far down he choked that. Absolutely hammering it. You gotta look at the weight that the bobber sits or that that line and you'll eventually get really good at seeing if that bobber is sitting funny. And that's how you'll know you got strikes on on a slip bobber with a jig. If it's sitting a little higher than what you normally would think, if uh, if it's sitting a little lower, if it's sitting a little definitely if it's sitting sideways, left and right, and you're in deep enough water and you know you're not on the bottom, that's a pretty telltale sign you got a fish on. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys saw that. That bobber was all the way under and wasn't even paying attention. Oh, see so he's running with it. There he is. Ooh, I don't think that's a crappie. I do not think that's a crappie at all. If that's a crappie, that is a big, big crappie. That is not a crappie. That is not coming up. That might be a muskie. I'm thinking a crappie hit it, and now a muskie has the crappie. That is what I'm thinking happened here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a muskie hit this. It's either a big smallmouth, big walleye, which eh, not really likely, or I got a muskie hooked on the crappie. He is not, this is only six pound test too. <laughs> I mean, it's not really like a, a, a smallmouth. Smallmouth would be bam, bam, bam with the head shakes. This is almost like a big walleye, or we got, definitely got a muskie here. 
and the muskie is holding the crappie. Oh, we got an exciting little, little Wednesday night. It's not gonna be a catfish. I know some of you probably guessing catfish. It's really not a, I mean, there might be some in here, not many. This lake is pretty much known for some decent sized smallmouth, crap load of crappie, a lot of, a lot of cookie cutter nine to 10 inch fish. And it has some pretty darn good, pretty darn good musky here. Yeah. Let's see if we can get him close to the surface. Oh, I can see him on a live scope. I can see him on the live scope. We got a musky, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to land him before he breaks off. I think he's got our, our crappie in his mouth. Eventually he's gonna, you know, yeah. Yeah, he did. Look at that. Yep. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what it looks like. When you have a muskie on the line, it absolutely destroys your crappie. I don't know if I can, like, the meat's all, yeah, he absolutely hammered that crappie. Look at that. See the teeth marks on it? Whew. I mean, if I release this, he, he had that fully in his mouth. Look at the teeth marks all the way back. Like, this crappie is dead. I don't know what to do. I can't really, I mean, I suppose I could try to eat some of it. I don't know if it'd be legal to throw it back. I'm going to throw it in a live well for now, and hopefully it starts kicking. I doubt it. Look how just destroyed that is. And for those of you kind of wondering how, how do I know if I'm moving my slip up, eventually you get good enough to just know. I just pitched out roughly 20 feet of line, so I'm not going to move the slip all the way up to the rod tip, but eventually you'll get good enough at it. You'll just be able to guess within a few feet how much line you got out. Well, I hope I'm kind of explaining things for some of you that had questions of how you would tie this setup on. Again, this is not going to be a staple <laughs> that I would use in the fall, but if you really loved watching a slip float go down and you want to fish in deeper water, this could definitely be a tactic you can use. It seems like there, there's a few fish right on the left side of that buoy. I'm just going to catch one more here and I might go pitch for some walleye. Oh, here we go. Oh, dang. Wait for the jigs to drop. See the jigs dropped? And, and that bobber popped. Oh no, he came off. He came off. Oh, there's a muskie right below the boat right here. You can see him swimming. That might be why the crappie aren't coming up. <laughs> That's a good muskie too. You can see him right, right below the boat there. That's a, that's a big muskie. I'm a, that's bigger than 40, I think. That's definitely why those crappie are not coming up. Hopefully we can get a good view of this bobber as it goes doop. All right, there, there it hit the, hit the stop and then just pops straight down. Instant. Man, crappie are jumping. They're so aggressive, they're jumping out of the water. That is going to wrap it up for me today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the slip bobber double jig setup technique. Uh, do you got any comments or questions? Post them in the comment section. I always love hearing from you. New video ideas, maybe sonar, you know, side imaging, down imaging, 2D. Questions you got about that or new setups. Everything will be linked in the video description. Be sure to check out the promo codes too. We'll see you.